know, Christ is coming back and he's mad. And he's mad at you ministers, you lying devils that call yourself servants of Christ. You who move God's Sabbath day to Friday and call yourselves the ministers of Christ, you lying devils, you offshoots of the worldwide churches of God. You're liars. You're liars. You move God's Sabbath day to Friday. That's a fact. And you refuse to repent. Christ is coming back and he's mad. He's going to kill 200 million right off the bat. Soon as he arrives on the earth, he's going to kill 200 million of you. The blood's going to be as high as a horse's bridle. That's how it's going to be. And when he gets a hold of you ministers, he is going to kill you ministers also. Because you refuse to repent. You refuse to put the Sabbath day back to the seventh day. What does the Bible say? Joel, why don't you read it? Why don't your ministers read it? Destruction is going to come from the Almighty. The day of the Lord, verse 15, Joel 1, 15. Alas for that day, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and it shall come as destruction from the Almighty. Is not the food cut off before our eyes? Your food in the United States. All the tins are smaller. Oh, even the wieners, the hot dogs are five in a package instead of six. You can't see what's going on. Is not the food cut off from before our eyes? There's drought right across the southern United States before your eyes. Verse 17, joy and gladness from the house of our God. The, she the seeds shrivel under the clods. Storehouses are in shambles. Barns are broken down. For the grain has withered. How the animals grown. Do you know that they're having to slaughter all the cattle in Texas because there isn't any feed for them? And you damnable ministers continue to break God's law. Look, judgment is now on the house of the Lord. That's right. It's not on the world yet. It's on the house of the Lord. And your ministers are causing all these problems in the world by their disobedience. Your offshoot ministers of the worldwide churches of God are the devils who are following the devil, who are following Satan's path of disobedience, moving God's Sabbath day to Friday. And one minister says, oh, he's going to wait till Christ returns. Oh, is that right, eh? Well, I think you better read Hebrews 10, 26. No sacrifice for your sins. And we're going to start naming them. We're going to start naming the ministers now because they are devils hiding, hiding the truth from the people, just like Satan hides the truth. You must worship on the seventh day, Australia, New Zealand, China, India, Pakistan, and any damnable minister who hides the truth will be thrown in the lake of fire. We, the obedient church of God, are stating the truth. We are telling you that all your offshoot ministers of the worldwide churches of God are defiling you. We are saying that there will be no more holding back from naming ministers that are lying devils and refuse to repent. Ministers such as William F. Dankenbrink, who's known full well for three to four years that the Sabbath day is being moved to Friday in half the world by a phony international dateline. And he, William F. Dankenbrink, Triumph Prophetic Ministries, refuses to repent. And also, continuing Church of God, Robert Thiel refuses to repent. We told you, we warned you, we gave you fair warning that we will now start marking you ministers. And today we're marking William F. Dankenbrink as a disobedient brat and yet you should have nothing to do with him. Mark those that walk contrary to the Bible. 
Mark those. Mark those that walk contrary to the Bible. That's what your Bible tells you to do. These ministers, Bob Thiel, William F. Dankenbrink, are deliberately walking contrary to God's Bible. They know the Sabbath day has been moved to Friday. They know that in 1882 everyone waited for the sun to go down in the other half of the world. And in 1883, poof, the day jumps back to Friday and they have all their members in Australia and New Zealand celebrating it on the Sabbath day on Friday. And they are damnable liars because they say they are obeying God when they are not. William F. Dankenbrink is a damnable liar. Bob Thiel is a damnable liar, proven by the fact that he moves God's Sabbath day to Friday. And he refuses to repent and put it back. That is a fact that cannot be denied. And if you were in the first century, Dankenbrink, they'd throw you out of the church for moving God's Sabbath to Friday. And the same thing with you, Theo. They'd throw you out of the church, continuing Church of God. Ha! Not continuing anything. Continuing sat Satanic Church of God. Yeah. He refused to repent. Wake up. What we are stating is the truth. And there is no deceit allowed. We are not going to let you ministers lie anymore. We're not going to let you lie anymore. We're going to mark you. Mark you as not being in accord with the Bible scriptures. With you not being in accord with the Bible. With you bearing false witness, Dankenbrink. You bearing false witness, Theo, saying that you obey God's Bible and that you have the Sabbath day on the correct day when you lying, you're lying, you're lying, you're following a phony 1883 international dateline. And Theo, you're a bigger liar, because you said, and I've got it in writing in an email, that you don't have any members in Australia. You don't have any members in New Zealand. You're a liar. When you get caught, then you lie. All these ministers lie. And then, then they try to turn it around and say, oh, we want you to be loving. We want you to have peace. There'll be no peace. There'll be no peace. There'll be no peace till you repent. If you repent, if you do well, God says, if you do well, that's what he said. <laughs> you know, go back in your Bible if you want the truth. He said, if you do well, it'll go well with you. That's the key. If you do well. But if you don't do well, you will be marked. And you, Dank and Brink, are now marked. And you, Theo, are now marked. I told you months ago I'm going to mark you. And I did the same thing to John Brisby of huh, his church. Church. <laughs> He's, he runs these ads, you know. The only one that's faithful to the Herbert W. Armstrong. What a lie! Because Herbert W. Armstrong repented. And that was the history of Armstrong. He searched for the truth and he repented. But Church of God the Eternal, John Brisby, I marked him years ago. I marked him back in 2005 when he refused to follow God's command of the new moon shall mark the days and that you shall worship on the new moon Ezekiel 46 3 your Bible says you shall worship on the new moon days and we mark the United Church of God who reply to their members we don't worship the moon you devil lying United Church of God you will not follow Ezekiel 46.3. Then you lie to your members saying that worshiping the moon, you deny Ezekiel 46.3. This is the end time now, folks. There's no more messing around. And I told you back in 2008, 
How far will we go? You just watch us and see how far we go. We're stating that Bob Thiel is a lying devil. We're stating that William F. Dankenbrink's a lying devil. We're t stating that John Brisby is a lying devil. They're all leading you straight into the gates of hell by having you refuse to obey God. Period. There is no mistake about it. And if you try to deny that, you ministers, then you are breaking the ninth commandment by being a liar. That's right. You are bearing false witness. Because you do move the Sabbath day to Friday in half the world, just like the poop does, Mr. Fishhead. Yeah, and you won't repent. You won't repent. And then you want us to say, Oh, everything's just fine, eh? Everything's just fine. Well, everything's not just fine. Nothing is just fine. Nothing is right. Everything's wrong. Because you, you, you are disobedient brats, you ministers. You've been given opportunity to repent, but you didn't repent. Instead, Dankenbrink turns it around. Oh, why can't you be nice? Because the Bible tells us to mark those that walk contrary to the Bible. Mark those that walk contrary to the first century doctrine. Are you going to follow your Bible? Are you going to mark those that walk contrary to the first century doctrine? Like your Bible tells you to? Are you? Or are you going to continue to support them? Give them money so that they can deceive others. Yeah. Well, it's all on your head. It's all on your head, you members. Because Hitler could not have gone to war alone. He needed backers. He, need, he needed financing. He needed money. And he got his money. Hitler got his money from Prescott Bush and from the Illuminati leaders who fomented World War II. Yeah, yeah, that's where he got his money from. And you're giving the money to the lying devil ministers who are moving God's Sabbath day to Friday. Now I'm going to raise up my voice like a trumpet and I'm not going to stop until you repent. And you've had years to repent. So this isn't something off the cuff. This is what has to be done. You know, it goes on in Joel, the call to repentance. You know, the battlefield. <laughs> Before them. <laughs> well, you've got the idea. What's the point of us talking to someone who in Joel 1 verse, chapter 1 verse 12, you know, who refuses to turn to God with their heart, with fasting and weeping, and especially in these days of unleavened bread, you know? And rend your heart and not your garments. So in the days of unleavened bread, examine yourself to see whether you're in the faith. 1882, everyone waited for the sun to go down in half the world. 1883, poof, the day jumps ahead to Friday. Examine yourself. Are you going to continue to support ministers who move God's Sabbath day to Friday? Are you going to support the poop who moves God's Sabbath day to Sunday? Give your heads a shake. Give your heads a shake. Be nice. Be nice. Unbelievable. So what? So what? So the ministers can continue deceiving you? Continue lying to you? Telling you that they are obeying God's Bible? You know? You'll only have peace when you walk properly. Romans 16, 17. That's what your Bible says to do. We follow the Bible. We're the obedient church of God. That's right. We're the only obedient church because your ministers are liars. Liars is proven by the fact that they move God's Sabbath day to Friday and refuse to repent. 
Now, you ministers, here's what's going to happen to you. Your brethren are going to mark you also. Romans 16, verse 17. On the, on the authority of Romans 16, verse 17, I command all you members of the offshoot churches of God, I command you the same way. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who dot, 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 walk contrary to the doctrine you learned in the first century. And look, don't let your devil-lying ministers twist who caused divisions, because they're the ones who caused division. Your ministers are the ones who caused division. You offshoot churches of God are the ones who caused divisions, because you are walking contrary to God's seventh-day commandment and having the Sabbath on the sixth day. So you members, I urge you, brethren, Note those, those ministers who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine of the first century. And you're supposed to avoid those ministers. Have nothing to do with them. You're supposed to mark them. So I mark William F. Dankenbrink. I mark Bob Thiel. I marked John Brisby. Church of God the Eternal. You're marked. Telling the members, now the members are responsible not to have anything to do with these ministers because they are marked, because they walk contrary. They, do, they are defiling the people. Your ministers, triumph prophetic ministries is defiling the people. Continuing Church of God is defiling the people. The United Church of God is defiling the people. Church of God the Eternal is defiling the people. Let no one deceive you with empty words. Have no fellowship with people, ministers, that refuse to follow the Bible. And they're liars that they say they obey God. And they don't want to be told to repent. These are the days of unleavened bread where you examine yourself. Well, let's start examining the teachings of the ministers. Deuteronomy 16, 16, three times a year. You will, all the men are supposed to appear at a place where God chooses. None of your ministers follow that. Ezekiel 46.3 You shall worship on the new moons. Where is the new moon day service? Where you shall worship. None of your ministers follow that. Learn not the way of the Gentile. They have Mother Whore's Day for their dear mother. They have the Whore's Day for their mother of Gaia, the springtime, goddess, the busy whore, Gaia, who gave birth to all the gods and goddesses. You have that day for your mother, yeah. Then you have Sky Father's Day, the longest day of the year, just like Christmas. Then you have Turkey God Day, the goose that laid the egg that Raul Cyrus sprang forth from. Then you have the other churches of God, like the Worldwide Church of God now calling itself Grace Communion International. What a piece of crap. They're celebrating Ishtar. This Sunday, they're celebrating Ishtar's Day, the goddess of sexual love, where you roll Easter eggs on the White House lawn and have rabbits and chocolate rabbits and fertility symbols. What do chocolate rabbits, what do eggs, Easter eggs, have to do with Yeshua being beaten to death so severely twice that he bled to death on the stake? Nothing. And yet, Grace Communion International, they don't even know what grace is. Grace is a limited period of time for you to repent in. Write this down. Grace is a limited period of time for you to repent in. Just like a cop pulls you over for speeding, well, he's, give, you give him a big spiel and he gives you a warning. Then the next week you come flying by, no grace for you, you refuse to repent. Your grace is over. That's what's going to happen to all of the offshoot ministers. They're going to be slain by God's word. They're going to be slain by the sword of this word. The seventh day is the Sabbath of your Lord, your God, throughout the world. And you can't use an international dateline. 
And you can't learn the way of the Gentile and have a turkey god day. Why don't you have a turkey god day right after Shemini answer it? Hey, why don't you? Doesn't make any difference. You're having it two months later. You're deceived by the devil and you refuse to repent. Well, we're marking those who walk contrary to the doctrine because this is the feast of unleavened bread where you examine and then you expose, you expose the liars. And these ministers don't want to repent. They don't want to repent. They need to be hit over the head with a two by four and they still won't repent. And then we've got a minister who's practicing white magic with a Kabbalah, with a Kabbalah, same Kabbalah that George Bush uses, where he, George Bush, cast the spell on America by reading from My Pet Goat, where he took the book, the book which is Baphomet, Baphomet's the goat, that's the Azale goat, okay? And George Bush takes the book, turns it upside down, then has the children chanting, Kite must hit steel! Kite must hit steel! Kite must hit steel! Casting a spell on the United States for the Twin Towers to go down. You ministers don't know anything about anything. Well, you can expect more trouble and more judgments against the United States. And judgment is now on the house of the Lord for you who are practicing the left-hand path. You know, <laughs> you know the left-hand path, path, Sifarot, the tarot tree, 22 channels. Yeah, that's what you're practicing if you practice a Sifarot count. I told you, counting the Omer, you count the cups. Cups! You want to count the Omer? Here's a cup. You cup, 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 49 of them. Then you have Pentecost. That's how you count the Omer. That's what your Bible says there. Isn't any Sifarot count in the Bible? Sifarot count is Kabbalistic from the Zohar. It's satanic. And it's a book of mysticism. You look it up. It's a book of mysticism. And your minister huh, will tell you, oh, don't worry about it. Your mysticism is just a word. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. It's white magic. Left hand versus right hand. And we're not even going to talk about it to tell you about the Kabbalah and the left hand and the right hand. And You don't want to even speak of such things. Yet your minister has got you practicing that. Turn from evil. Turn from evil. And we're not going to back up. We are going to smash the evil ministers until Christ comes back. And that is our job. That is our job because God raised up the obedient church of God to be in harmony with the Bible. And we are the only church that is in harmony with the Bible. We're the only church that follows the four fasts of Amos. We're the only church that follows Ezekiel 46.3 on New Moon Day. We have a service and we've been having that for years. We're the only congregation that explicitly tells the members, do not learn one celebration day of the Gentiles. No Mother Goddess Day, no Sky Father's Day, no Turkey God Day, and no Ishtar Easter Day, and no Santa Claus Christmas Day, the big red fire god that comes down the chimney. We are setting the record straight because you've got ministers who are the five foolish virgins who only got five things right. And they refuse and continue to neglect and refuse to put everything right. Turn, turn thou from evil. Do what is good. But they won't. They won't turn from evil. So now that I've admonished you, now that I've named and marked the ministers, 
I've marked Dankenbrink, I've marked Thiel, and I've marked Brisby. Now, let us enter the throne room. So all please rise, face the north heavens, where Father and Yeshua are. Arms up, that's how you praise. Don't even know how to worship, you put your arms up, that's how you praise. Then, you close your eyes. In sincerity, bow your head in humility. Almighty, most merciful, loving Father, we, the obedient Church of God, are going to get your word according to your scriptures out. Your scriptures state to mark those who walk contrary to your Bible, especially your Test Commandments, Sabbath day, that if the members of these other offshoots don't follow, if the members don't follow your Sabbath day in half the world, they don't have your, their mark on, a mark of, of yours. They don't have the mark of God on them if they don't have the Sabbath day, right? So of course, Father, bless our pronouncements of marking William F. Dankenbrink, marking John Brisby, marking Bob Thiel. We put it on your table, Father, for you to carry it out. Because we are going to follow your Bible that tells us to mark those who walk contrary to the first century doctrine. Be with our 200 plus brethren in Pakistan, please continue to keep on protecting them. None of them have gotten murdered since they've joined us five years ago. But before eight were murdered by a mob of a thousand, very dangerous area, the whole world is falling apart, so please continue to protect them. Father, well, please inspire the services, both the hearing and the speaking. And let this be a witness against the three ministers that we mark, Duncan, Brink, Brisby, and Theo. Let it be a witness against them on their records for not repenting. And Father, the same goes for the United Church. We will contact them, and they'll be next on our list as we go through all the churches. So we're doing your work, Father. Someone's got to do it. Someone's got to do it, and we're the only ones that we can see, so we're going to continue doing it. So, it's up to you, Father. Bless our work. Help the people to repent. Help them to come out of these lying ministers, groups who refuse, ministers who refuse to have your Sabbath day on Friday, have it on Friday, refuse to have it on Saturday, the seventh day in half the world. Well, Father, we can speak boldly because we humbly follow your Bible. And as long as we are following your Bible, we have every confidence. And I'd be shuddering in my boots if I was one of those ministers who have just been marked for not repenting after all these times of being told. So now, Father, we put the service in your hands and ask this all, including the marking of the ministers, in your name, Father. We ask it of you. And then we ask for Yeshua HaMashiach to therefore place this as the attorney in front of you so that you, Father, can make the right choice of what you're going to do with these ministers. So we ask us all in our attorney, Yeshua HaMashiach's holy righteous name, our soon arriving king of the earth who will slay 200 million Amen. No messing around anymore. No messing around. Christ is coming back. He's killing 200 million. And you're worried about oh, me speaking words. Wait till he starts slicing off your heads, you ministers. Wait till you see what oh, blood up to the horse's bridle. Hey, maybe then you'll start thinking, oh, maybe, maybe I should stop moving God's Sabbath day to Friday in half the world with a phony 1880. Maybe I should stop, because he just might cut off my head, physically as well as spiritually. Turn, turn thou from evil. So take your songbooks, 
Here's our beautiful 1933 um, worded songbook, the original words, which were more succinct and powerful, camera one and camera two. But you don't have that. So let's use the worldwide songbook so that everyone can be on the same page. Pardon the pun. Page number 27, turn thou from evil, do what is good, seek peace, pursue it. How do you have peace? <laughs> by turning from evil. <laughs> Not by having, covering up evil. So if you believe that you should turn from evil, sing out. Psalm 34. <laughs> sang out, turn thou from evil. And since we marked the ministers, let us now turn to page number 64. We gave them fair warning, month after month after month, and they refused to repent. Rise and judge, eternal one. going to judge. It's going to be important. Listen to the words. Listen to the words of rise and judge, eternal one.
Rise and judge, eternal ones. I hope you read it and sang it. Keep not silence, O oh my God. Your foes plot their schemes. They scheme to lie about the obedient church of God. They lie and say that they are obedient when they are disobedient. Turn now ahead to hymn number 91. How I love I thy law. The love of God is keeping the commandments. That's what your Bible says. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So sing out, page 91, and then think. Salah, think if your minister is going to keep this fourth commandment. Remember the seventh day to keep it holy in half the world. He doesn't love the law. He's a liar because he moves it. He moves it to Friday, which is proven by the facts. So you sing out, you sing out how I love I thy law, or don't sing it. If you want to support your minister who moves God's Sabbath day to Friday, don't sing this song, because you don't love his law. who've got their own ideas, they're going to put in a Siferot count. Yeah. Huh. Well, unless the Lord shall build a house, because the Siferot count isn't in the Bible, the weary builders toil in vain. What's in the Bible is you count 49 days. You don't have Gavir into Hod, Hod into Chesach, Chesach into Tiferet. That's all satanic Kabbalah. Unless the Lord shall build the house, the wilderness weary builders toil in vain. In, in Mark 7, 7, in vain you worship teaching Kabbalah instead of the Bible, teaching the doctrines of men, of ha handwritten man, Kabbalah from Jewish mystics, satanic mystics. So sing out if you believe this, or don't sing out. If you're going to support your minister, who practices the Kabbalah, don't sing this song, because it doesn't fit you. You want to have disobedience. <laughs>
if it's not in your Bible, you don't do it. And don't let anyone deceive you with empty words. Have no fellowship with the works of the Kabbalah, with the works of darkness instead. Expose them. You know, when you expose things to the light and see that the Kabbalah is satanic, then, then, you have people that will have to repent. Will have to repent. Just remember, Kabbalah is a book of mysticism. Yes, satanic, that witches and warlocks use. And that's where your Sifro account comes from. We are going to move ahead. We are going to get you to obey the Ten Commandments. And by the way, you have got to realize that you've got to live by every jot and tittle of God's Bible. And that means that you want to follow. Not because you have to, but because you want to. And rough times, rough times are coming upon this earth. Rougher than you realize. So for the people, that want to know that the obedient Church of God is on the cutting edge. Remember I had told you that the generals that were fired were fired because they refused. They refused to detonate a nuclear warhead over Charleston. Now it's time for some straight talk now against your leaders Two, because your leaders want to kill you. So you've got problems with your spiritual leaders, and you've got problems with your physical leaders. Now it's time to give you the straight talk. Your government is totally out of control. All of your church ministers are totally out of control. Obama has fired over 200 plus command level officers. Your ministers don't know what's going on in the world. Here's what's going on in the world. Obama couldn't get the war started with Syria because Putin wouldn't play along. So it has to be a nuclear war because just the ground forces, you know, don't, don't mean anything. It's got to go nuclear, because they've got to have total chaos. The Illuminati. And remember, I told you, all of your leaders are Illuminati. And I've told you that Shimon Perez is Polish. And Benjamin Netanyahu is Polish. And they are 33rd degree Masons. And Obama's a 32nd degree Mason. And all of the leaders, you know, even Sarkozy is a Mason. Even Putin is Masonic. And this is this big card game going on. The world is a big card game. And as they're shuffling the decks and shooting out the cards, when a player doesn't like what he's dealt, he sometimes shoots the other player. That's how the game is played. So they shot Gaddafi. Yeah, of Libya. The people in Libya love Gaddafi. They had free education. They could go to America and get free education because Gaddafi would pay for it all. They had free electricity. You could have a free farm, and free gasoline, and free equipment for your farm. Amazing, isn't it? None of you, none of you were told this. That's because you listened to the network news. None of you were told that Ronald Reagan was a lying devil who signed the papers that Christians will be marked as disruptors for execution. Ronald Reagan signed that paper. Ronald Reagan sold arms to Iran. Give your head a shake. See how you're brainwashed? You know nothing. You know nothing. You watch the network news and you're programmed. You're programmed. You are programmed. 
You're not watching programming. You're being programmed. And indeed, I've turned off my televisions now completely because I don't want to be programmed. I don't, I don't listen to television anymore. It's all nonsense. It's all programming by the six big corporations. So do you want the real deal? Well, the real deal is Obama has fired over 200 plus command level officers. And I should read this to you so that you can get the gist of this. And the conflict between Obama and the military is a case of an immovable object meeting an irresistible force. The only reason we didn't have a power blackout and have everything knocked out for electronic communications and all of your credit cards records knocked out and all of your electronic banking knocked out, all of the power grid knocked out is because the military refused to obey Obama's order to detonate a nuclear device over Charleston Harbor. Now, Obama wants martial law to usher in his new world order. Now, some in the military, the 200 plus that are being fired, won't support the mass destruction of America. And the military blocked the nuclear detonation in Charleston, South Carolina last summer. Now, some of the deposed military officers have been planning a coup and a long-term guerrilla civil war, civil war, civil war against the Obama administration and against the Department of Homeland Security. Trouble is, Obama's got Russian and Chinese troops already on our soil. And they are, Obama is trying to find a false flag event so that he can declare martial law. Now, it's important to point out that Senator Lindsey Lindsay, uh, Graham, so you know that I've, I've got substantiation on, on this. On the same day it was reported that nuclear missiles were missing, he said, Lindsey Graham said, if we do not hurry up and attack Syria, Charleston Harbor would be nuked. That's what Senator, not me, that's what Senator Lindsey Graham said. If we don't hurry up and attack Syria, Charleston Harbor would be nuked. So we couldn't get the war, Obama couldn't get the war in Syria going. So then Obama did try to nuke Charleston Harbor to knock out all of the communications of the United States with an EMP. This is Senator Lindsey Graham stating this. Now, the military intercepted the nuclear device intended for Charleston and detonated it 600 miles off of the Charleston coast in the Atlantic. And the Russians even confirmed the explosion. Because you can't have a nuclear device going off in the world without having a third world war unless you tell the Russians what's going on. So Obama was thwarted. But he's undeterred. There will be another false flag attack with the purpose of putting the country under martial law. See, the point of all this is for them to have order out of chaos. And there are Russian troops that are stationed on the American soil. They are here in this country, and they'll be used as martial law troops because Obama cannot, cannot, cannot count on the U.S. military. Because the U.S. military is against Obama. And Obama is trying to clean out the U.S. military that's against him. So you can thank the U.S. military that you are not freezing in the dark and this goes back to the grid x drill on september the 7th 2013 and there was a dr garrow g-a-r-o-w and he validated this 
at the G Grid X2 drill false flag events was stopped as soon as it became announced that the Obama administration had brought the Russians and the Chinese the Russians and the Chinese into the drill. The American forces, the American generals stopped the drill, Grid X2, when they realized that Russian and Chinese were participating in the drill. <laughs> you know, this is astounding. Since both nations, you know, threatened to, you know, Russia and China threatened uh, to uh, annihilate us over Syria, and if we mess with Iran, they're clearly our enemies. But Obama treats the Russians and the Chinese as our allies. It's amazing. It was quickly announced that the Russian and Chinese would be participating in the upcoming RIMPAC War Games. The RIMPAC War Games are the largest war games in the world and have historically been war games that are designed to practice fighting against the Chinese and Russians. Now our enemies are participating in the drill, which makes no sense at all, unless you want to use your enemies as shock troops to go against the American people. Now this is all documented. This, I'm not making this up. This is all documented. And your ministers know nothing about what's going on in the world. They're watching network news. They're watching Fox News. You know, they're worrying about a missing plane for a month and a half, which is just a total diversion, just another false flag to get everybody talking about the missing plane and to keep your mind off the fact that <laughs> you're not going to have any food. The cost of everything is going to be going up to the sky and I told you that all your canned goods already are shrunk in size. Let me give you some figures of what's really going on. And you need these figures to know what's really going on. Here. 92 million Americans are permanently, permanently out of the workplace just like Detroit, you know, Detroit's a basket case. 50% you know, of the people are out of work in Detroit. They're thinking of bull bulldozing, you know, miles of the city because nobody's living in the houses. They all had to leave. 52 million are on food stamps now. 90 million on some other type of assistance. 101 million Americans are on welfare. Now you add this up. 92 million permanently out of the workplace. 52 million on food stamps. 90 million on some other type of government program. 101 million on welfare. You end up with 335 million files on Americans. And there are only now 311 million people in the United States. But there are 335 million files of people who are living off of government dole. And this is planned, folks. This isn't an accident. Any recovery that we're having is known as a jobless recovery. And Bernanke had said that back in 2010. They have this planned out. This isn't an accident. That, that we've got 335 million um, files of people that are getting supported by the government when there's only 311 people in the United States, 311 million people. They want chaos because all hell is going to break loose when the currency revaluation happens by July the 1st and all these people get cut off. All these... 335 million files get closed because there isn't any money to pay them. They want to create chaos. That's how the New World Order is going to bring, be brought in. And these people that are running the government, these Illuminati, they have a slogan. Break all the rules. That's their slogan, is break all the rules. 
These are facts, folks. 335 million files of people on the dole when there's only 311 million people in the United States. Let me tell you what else is going to happen. They're going to have a mass vaccination program. And if you say no to the vaccination, you're going to be put in a FEMA camp as a disruptor. Or President Ronald Reagan will have the Christians in the FEMA camps as disruptors, because Reagan signed that into law way back in 1985. You know, 30 years ago, 29 years ago. They're going to be debtors prisons, because now they're picking up people for not paying their parking tickets and putting them in jail. That's a debtor's prison. There's homeless prisons now. They're picking up people and putting them in FEMA camps who are homeless. And there are re-education camps. They're hiring people for re-education camps where they're going to re-educate people. Now, the whole world has left the USA party. Here's your news brief here, okay? I'll tell you, I'll bring you up to date with the world here. You know, they're, they're, let's think of this as a party, because I know how to explain things well. Like I told you that the whole world is one big card game, and all these different national leaders, all these Illuminati leaders are playing cards over the assets of the world, trying to get their hands on them and grab more and more of the minerals, gold, and resources, and oil of the world. And occasionally they shoot each other at, us, at any card game. Any card game keeps going on. Well, let me tell you what's happened now. The whole world has left the party and the USA is sitting by itself at the punch bowl, sucking on a straw, everyone sucking down their, <laughs> their government support payments. But everybody's left. Everybody's left. And the USA is the drunk that's sitting by himself by the punch bowl when everybody has left the party. China and Russia have left the party. They're moving away from the US dollar. Putin's printing gold coins, five ruble gold coins. China has been buying gold up for the last three years. They're waiting for the drunken U.S. sailor to collapse. China and Russia are waiting. Here's why we didn't have World War III. They don't have to have World War III. They're just waiting for the drunken U.S. sailor to collapse. Then they, China and Russia, will take over with their currencies of a global reset. A global reset. And that reset is coming. Probably it's going to come by the 1st of July. And gold, you know, I'll tell you what gold is going to be worth. How to protect yourself temporarily, because then you're going to throw your gold and silver in the street. But how to protect yourself temporarily, gold is going to go up to $50,000 an ounce. You heard it here first. And traditionally, silver has been worth, over the last, you know, millennium, uh, last thousand years, silver has always been worth about one-sixteenth that of gold. So therefore, you know, silver is going to be worth $3,105 an ounce. And right now, you can get it at about $19 an ounce. So buy it if you can, and buy pre-64 pre-1964 coins from kitco.com. And if you don't have any money and you want to get some coins, most of them have been taken out of circulation, but go to the bank and ask for $50 worth of coins, of silver. Tell them you need it for gifts, which is true. And then go through the coins and try to find anything that's pre-1964, because that's 90% silver. 
Because if you want to buy coins, you know, if you go to kitco.com, you have to pay out $1,500 to get a bag of uh, $100 face value dimes or quarters. So most people don't have $1,500, including me now that I've been stripped out by the IRS and taken everything. But I'm still standing up, and I'm going to stand up and speak out while I still can before there is a famine of the word. And then if spiritually you won't hear from me, physically you won't hear from me, because there'll be a famine of the world. Word. Right now, we're the Romans 9.28 work. And that's proven by the facts, because we have restored the Sabbath day, as by, proven by our congregation in Pakistan, that waits till tomorrow for the sun to set, and then has the Sabbath. And that celebrates God's new month day. We've restored the doctrine. We've restored the four feasts of the Lord. We've restored new moon day. Your lying ministers won't acknowledge that. And they won't follow that. But it's on their heads now because we're marking them. So back to the United States here. We got thrown out of Syria. Realize this. The United States is a toothless tiger. We got thrown out of Syria because Russia wouldn't start the Third World War because they're waiting for the drunken sailor, the American drunken sailor, to collapse. Now, I like the USA, but I hate its leaders. So worse than a toothless tiger, the United States is a helpless eagle. And it's not even an eagle. You know, on your dollar bill, that's a phoenix. That's not an eagle. And it's a phoenix because that's where the Illuminati devils landed. Yeah, the Illuminati devils came in to Phoenicia. And that's why you've got a pyramid on your dollar bill. Because it's all satanic. But you don't know anything. You don't realize anything. Right now, I hate to say this, but the United States is the hemorrhoid of the world. We're just a nuisance to China and Russia. We're just a nuisance to them. They are moving out of the U.S. dollar as fast as they can. China is. Russia is. The USA got back down in Syria. And no country is scared of the USA anymore. Now the countries call on Russia to scare off the USA. See, this is the time of Jacob's trouble. Now there's going to be a 40% devaluation of the dollar. So if you've got any money to stock up on food, realize that you're going, your food's going to cost you, instead of a dollar, it's going to cost you a dollar forty for everything. Instead of ten dollars, it's going to cost you fourteen dollars. Instead of a hundred dollars, it's going to cost you a hundred and forty dollars. How are you going to live? It's a law. Think on that. We want you to be safe. So we're telling you if you can, to buy silver. It's only a temporary stopgap because people throw their silver and gold in the street, but for now you're going to need it. And your ministers, you're being taught by people who don't understand the Bible. So, so simple. Seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God, and your minister will have it on Friday in half the world by following a phony international dateline. And he'll trick you. He'll trick you and say that he's obeying God. But he will never answer your question. Why don't you ask him? Did everybody wait till the sun went down on the seventh day in 1882? And he'll have to say yes. And then ask him, in 1883, did the day jump forward to Friday in half the world? See what he says. And then ask him, why is he following that? See, there is no semblance of following the Bible by your ministers. They are lying devils, and they refuse to repent. They refuse to repent. 
Now, back to the world situation. I explained the blood red moon to you back last week. On the first day of unleavened bread, I told you that it would tarry because it was at seven o'clock. It had appeared first in the evening at seven o'clock on the night of the 14th, and then it disappeared at 2 a.m. on the night of the 15th. So it came late on the 14th, which to me is the sign that it, the trouble would tarry. So that's why nothing has happened. And I told you that ahead of time. Because if there was World War III now, if there was a big invasion of Iran, if there was a big war going on now, then I would have been wrong. But I wasn't wrong. And just for Bob Thiel's information of the Continuing Church of God, I was right when I told you when the European Union currency would hit its lowest. That was three years ago, and I told you the day, and I was correct. And I also told you the day of when, remember Gaddafi? I told you, it's all in our scriptures, it's all in our notes, it's all in the actual videos where I told you of these events. But here's the point, I want you to understand that your ministers are not teaching you the Bible and your leaders of the United States are a joke. They're a joke. And they're going to try to bring in the New World Order out of total chaos. And it's foolishness. It's just plain foolishness. Now let me tell you about your bank accounts. What's being passed behind your backs in 2010 to help you understand. Don't have any money in the bank. Do not. Because you are not a depositor anymore. When you put money in your bank, you are now a shareholder. That's the legislation that was passed in the Dodd-Frank Bill of 2010. You are not a depositor when you have money in your USA bank. You are now a shareholder. Now when the bank goes under, therefore when the bank goes under, the bank's shares are worthless and your money is worthless because you have no deposit, you're a shareholder. You, as a sh shareholder, are like fourth on the list for the unfunded liabilities to be paid back to you at some time in the future. You're way down the list at fourth. And this is the same in Canada, and New Zealand, and Australia. They're all putting bank deposits in the category of shareholders. And it'll be like in Cyprus. Remember Cyprus? Just a year ago, they took the money out of the people's bank accounts. They took the money out of the people's bank accounts. Same thing's going to happen in the United States. Now when's it going to happen? I'll tell you. Put it in your bear notes. When the interest rate goes below zero, then it's known as the right of offset. It kicks in. The right of offset. Bear note, the right of offset kicks in. That means they will charge you for having money in your bank account. They will charge you for having money in your bank account. And that's how they're going to take your money. Google I-O-E-R. I-O-E-R. We haven't got a chance to time to explain it. But it, for all you ministers who have your church's funds in your bank, get them out of your bank. Put them into gold or silver. Go to kitco.com. 
start buying gold and silver, bury them somewhere in the forest. Because you're going to lose all your, all your congregants' money. See, we're preaching the truth to a nation that's perishing and to a church groups that are perishing. We want to help you understand that your motive, you members, is to obey God's Bible. That's your motive. Your motive should be to obey God's Bible. Not to obey your ministers who disobey God's Bible. You have got to have the motive of obeying God's Bible. And if you're going to obey your ministers instead of God's Bible, then you're going to be in the lake of fire. And indeed, right now, you are the foolish virgins. Because you're only half full of oil. You're only half full of obedience. You don't celebrate and worship on God's new month day. You don't have the four fasts of the Lord. You refuse to have God's Sabbath on the seventh day in half the world. And you have Turkey God Day, and you have Mother Goddess Day, and you have Sky Father's Day. You're only half full of oil. That's a fact. So you've got to realize that the Ten Commandments, the Fourth Commandment is real. Remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Now the other thing that's going to happen is that you should get some jewelry that you can wear so that you can move to different countries and that you can go to Petra, you can get out of the United States, you can go to Jordan, you can go to the Wadi area of Jordan, not even go into Petra, but you should have gold jewelry. Here's what's going to happen. Do you know how Fukushima blew up? It was deliberate. It was deliberate. I can prove it. Because there was a ball of plasma over the power plant in Japan before the earthquake. It was deliberate. Deliberate. Now, the Georgia Guidestones, which are like 120 miles southwest of us here, state that the population is going to be reduced to 500 million. How are they going to do it? Here's your newest bear note. Hang on to your seat. All of the nuclear plants in the United States are going to go critical and melt down and they're going to move the people out of the most of the areas around the nuclear plants, especially like the East Coast, New York. They're going to put you all in FEMA camps for your own protection. There was a ball of plasma that triggered the earthquake of Fukushima. And all of this was planned because the storage pools for Fukushima were at the top of the building. Now, who puts storage pools at the top of a building, eh? Well, they did it deliberately so that when they had the earthquake, all the fuel rods would collapse down into the building. And indeed, you are being poisoned as we speak. The West Coast is being poisoned as we speak. We're going to have radiation poisoning throughout the United States, and they are going to reduce the world's population by having the earthquakes of all the nuclear reactors in the United States going critical, either from a plasma event, same as over Fukushima, Daiichi power plant, or by having electromagnetic pulse knock out all the electricity in the United States and then all of the generation plants in the United States will go critical because there isn't enough diesel power fuel to keep on running the water pumps to keep them cool. They'll all go critical. And we'll have the time of trouble greater than ever was before and never shall be again. Now, we, the obedient Church of God, are the only ones telling you these things. We're the only ones that told you that 9-11 was a deliberate inside job. 
that the building was blown up, and that it's impossible. One fact can prove it. The building came down at free fall speed, seven seconds. That cannot happen if one floor is pancaking the other. And besides, once the top floor pancakes the bottom next floor, the top floor disintegrates, so there's nothing to pancake anymore. Plus, the thermite was in the metal. And the pit was glowing for like three weeks it was burning. And kerosene. Jet fuel is just kerosene. It's like racing gas. I used to use it myself. 110 octane. It can't melt steel. Or else all of your kerosene lanterns would just melt down. Yeah, you couldn't have a kerosene lantern because your lantern would melt. The buildings were detonated. You can see the explosions on each floor blowing up the sides. That isn't dust from the floor falling, because the explosion, the dust blows out, then the floor falls. Then the bl dust blows out the next floor, and then the floor falls. And you can see the thermite, the steel cutting the thermite and the running down the sides of the building, the molten metal. Anyways, it is out of control. This is Satan's world. Satan has deceived your ministers. Satan has taken control of your world leaders. They're going to bring an alien savior through. And he's not an alien. He's a fourth dimensional creature. And we've told you this, that it is not an alien from outer space. Because you'd see them traveling from this galaxy to the others, other galaxy. And there, there isn't a line of ships traveling back and forth from galaxies. There's nothing. It's all here on our planet. And remember I told you that Antarctica is owned by no one except the demons own Antarctica. That's where they have their home. It's a portal where they come in. Enough said. We, the obedient Church of God, are the only ones who have the wherewithal in order to get you out of the mud. And we're telling you about God's wrath. And that's what's going to be revealed next. And you'd better snap out of obeying your devil-lying ministers. You've got to instead heed the word of God so that you can be saved. And we are the only one who is warning you. We are the only one that is warning you. And the Lord, you know, you read the Bible. And Hebrews 12, 29. For it is perfectly true that our God is a burning fire. Yeshua is coming back, and he's coming back mad. You remember how he was about the temple? Just think how mad he's going to... And that was just the money changers. You think how mad Yeshua is going to be at ministers like Dankenbrink, Brisby, and Theo, who moved the Sabbath day, the Holy Sabbath day, to Friday in half the world. You just think how mad Yeshua is going to be. You know what Yeshua said? Luke 12, 49. I came to cast fire upon the earth, and would that it were already kindled. Yeshua said that. He, Yeshua, said that he came to cast fire to the earth. He, Yeshua, said that he wished it was already burning. Psalm 69, 24, Pour out your wrath on them. Let your fierce anger overtake them. We mark these ministers. Now it's up to God. Psalm 76, 10, Surely your wrath against men brings you praise. And the survivors of your wrath are restrained. So you members are going to be the survivors. 2 Thessalonians 1, 8 to 9. 2 Thessalonians 1, 8 to 9. He will punish those who do not know God and who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
they will be punished with everlasting destruction. Your ministers who don't obey this fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, they will be punished with everlasting destruction. Nahum 1 verse 2. The Lord is a jealous God and an avenging. The Lord is a jealous God and is avenging. The Lord avenges and he's full of wrath. The Lord takes vengeance on his adversaries and reserves wrath for his enemies. And who's the enemy of God? Those who refuse to obey God. Now, are you going to be the object of God's wrath by following your lying minister? Or are you going to put your faith in God's word? Well, God didn't appoint you to suffer wrath. 1 Thessalonians 5.19 For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation. But you're going to suffer wrath because you refuse to obey. You're going to follow your lying minister and just think everything's all right. Everything's going to continue on. You know, that's what it says in the Bible. They think everything's just going to keep on continuing. Well, it's not. I'm here to tell you that now judgment is on the house of the Lord. And there will only be a few people going to be saved. Luke 13, 23. Luke 20. 13, 23, someone asked him, Lord, are there only a few people going to be saved? Well, Matthew 7, 14, enter the narrow gate. That's what you're supposed to do. So Luke 13, 23. Then one said to him, Lord, are there few to be saved? And he said to them, Strive to enter the narrow gate. Verse 24, For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not, not, not be able. Who said that? Yeshua said, You won't be able to enter. And there'll be many who will not enter. So it's the law. Think on that. You want to keep obeying your lying minister? You know, your ministers are, are going to say in verse 26, you know, then we begin to say we ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets, but he will say, I tell you, I do not know you. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, all you workers of going along with a phony international dateline of moving God's Sabbath day to Friday. There are other points, but I'm going to stick with that point because it can't be denied. Verse 28, there will be whipping and gnashing of teeth. That's what's going to happen to you. All you members who support these lying ministers, because the ministers won't repent. You know, don't let these ministers deceive you with empty words. Ask them, does the international dateline, did it move God's Sabbath day to Friday? Yes or no? And if they say no, they're lying. Because in 1886, everybody waited for the sun to go down. 1887, poof! 1883, poof! All of a sudden, the day jumps to Friday. Mark and avoid anyone who walks disorderly. Romans 16, 17. And you're supposed to present yourself as holy without blemish. And you know, the lying ministers say they obey God. And they don't want to be told to repent. They refuse to be told to repent. And they refuse to obey. So what are you going to do with them? Hey? What are you going to do with them? Well, I've got a message. Yeah, I got the message. I like putting things in song so that, you know, it's easier to remember, easier to recall. Let's see if we can get the guitar to cooperate. 
as usual, we got to fight with everything because nothing ever works the way it should. Because there is a devil. There is a devil out there. And we drive him away, but he keeps coming back. That's his nature. Well, I've got a message. Yeah. Based on a classical song that I put words to it. It's roughly in tune today. As soon as I can hold it so it keeps playing without cutting out, I might have to hold it like this and balance it. Alright, here's the message for you today. Oh, how am I gonna get this thing?
only way you can rule it is by every jot and tittle. Not by putting in Turkey God Day. Not by putting in Mother Goddess Day. Not by putting in Sky Father's Day. Not by putting in Easter Sunday. Not by putting in Christmas Day. But by living every jot and tittle of this Bible that says, Learn not the way of the Gentile. Let no minister deceive you with empty words. Have no fellowship with those who do not follow God's Bible. Romans 16, verse 17. There's only going to be a chosen few. It's what we read in Luke 13, verse 23. Are there only a few people going to be saved? That's what they asked him. And the answer was, enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and narrow is the way, broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many enter through it, destruction. But small is the gate, and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Well, your ministers have a problem with this, because they want the broad way. They want to have an international dateline. They refuse to have the Sabbath on the seventh day. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to close this window and go to another window. And let's see if I can give you more truth. I have to move one of the computers over here. Let's see if I can get it to cooperate. So, if I tried to give you a, an address, let's tell you a little story here. If I tried, could give you an address of how to get to, uh, I don't know, my house or how to get to how to get to the kingdom. You know, I could say, you know, get out of your house, just leave your house as fast as possible and don't look back. Or, I could give you directions. I could say, these are the directions to come to the kingdom. Well, repentance is just like that. Repentance is not just saying that you love God, Repentance is actually doing things that get you in the direction of walking in Yeshua's footsteps. You've got to walk as he walked. You've got to walk as he walked. There are things you've got to do. There are things your ministers have to do. And we, the obedient Church of God, are giving you the directions. So we're not just saying get out of your lying minister's ways and start following all of the Bible ways like New Moon Day, like the four fasts of the Lord in Amos. We are showing you the way. We're not just saying we obey God, we're proving to you that we are obeying God. It's not just yapping about fleeing from sin, like your ministers will yap about fleeing from sin, but they don't flee from sin. They don't have true repentance. They're just yapping. They're just yapping. Look, we want the best for you, and we want you to walk the way Yeshua walked. You have got to receive the gospel according to the way Yeshua lived. And your duty is not to walk disorderly. And indeed, God expects us to say these words. God expects us. Galatians 6, 1-2 God expects us, those who are spiritual, to try to restore the fallen. That's plain. 
James 5, 19 to 20. God gave us responsibilities. The Word of God enjoins upon us responsibilities. You know, 1 Corinthians, you know, when, when ministers' sins are publicly known that they, they move God's Sabbath day to Friday, and you, you members just don't get it. You just don't get it. You keep supporting a minister who's moving God's Sabbath day to Friday. You just don't get it. And you think you're doing right. You're not. You're sinning. You're supporting the poop. Enough of you quit supporting your ministers, quit supporting Hitler. Hitler couldn't fight the war by himself. Neither could the ministers. You've got to have people deceived. So, we are here to try to pull you out of the mud. And we're reporting. We're reporting in 1 Corinthians 5, verse 1, the things that are wrong in the church. And in verse 5 of 1 Corinthians 5, verse 5, you know, deliver such as one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. There you go. These are the days of unleavened bread. So you're supposed to purge out the old leaven, verse 7, of 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7. Therefore purge out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, since you are truly unleavened. Now either you're going to be unleavened or not. Now all this yapping about the days of unleavened bread and looking for leaven in your house, well, let's start looking for leaven in your minister's doctrines. That's where you should be looking for leaven. Enough of this nonsense of just looking for leaven in your house. You've got to look for leaven in your minister's doctrine. Are you going to do that? Are you going to be God's bride? Are you going to stick up for God's ways? You'd better, if you think you're God's bride, you'd better stick up for God's ways. And I've told you that there are going to be a lot of people with weeping and gnashing of teeth that are going to be locked out. They're going to be locked out. And remember... Saul did not destroy all the pagan days, all the pagan animals. Here's the analogy. Saul kept the best animals. That's like you keeping Mother Goddess Day, you keeping Sky Father's Day, you keeping Turkey God Day. They are Gentile pagan animals. And you're keeping them. And you refuse to repent. So the kingdom will be taken away from you. Because you, like Saul, the kingdom was taken away from Saul. Christ is not coming back happy. I told you. He was mad, mad, as a hornet took up a whip, drove the money changers out. What do you think he's going to do to the ministers who move God's Sabbath day to Friday? I'm going to keep on harping on it till you get it through your head, you ministers. You've got to be hit over the head with a two-by-four. You just won't do it. You'll ignore it. Well, I'm not going to let you ignore it. Week after week after week, I'm going to speak the truth of you being disobedient brats and that you are walking disorderly and that God enjoins us to convict to convict the disorderly. No, Second Thessalonians three six. And while we're we're getting that, let's go into Hebrews ten. Ten twenty six off the top of my head. Because this applies to you members now. Because I've been preaching this enough to the ministers. Hebrews 10, 26. 
You members, if you sin willfully after you've received the knowledge of the truth that the Sabbath day cannot be moved to Friday in half the world, no sacrifice for your sins on these days of unleavened bread. Because I'm trying to get the leaven out of the churches and you want to eat the leaven of the churches. So you want to eat leaven, all you ministers and all you members. Your ministers are feeding you leaven. They're feeding you leaven and you're stupid enough to eat it. Well, Hebrews 10.26, on the authority of Hebrews 10.26, you have no sacrifice for your sins. Because you are eating the leaven of your ministers. You are walking disorderly. Second Thessalonians, let's, let's turn there. I'm running out of time again. <sighs> would be so nice if we could all obey, wouldn't it? Then I wouldn't have to be admonishing you week after week. But somebody's got to do it. It says that all things will be restored before Christ comes back. We're restoring it. So, 2 Thessalonians 3, 6. But we command you. Don't ask. We're not asking you. We're commanding you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, withdraw from every minister who walks disorderly and not according to the first century doctrine. That's a command. For you to withdraw from every minister who walks disorderly orderly that's a command that's a command in your bible second thessalonians 3 16 you are to leave your ministers that walk disorderly and we are going to keep telling you that so that you can get it through your head that you have gone astray like a lost sheep. Psalm 119, my favorite psalm, 176th verse. Gone astray like a lost sheep. And Joel 2.13, rend your hearts, not your garments. All you members, return to the Lord your God. Forget about your ministers. They won't return to God. We're in the end times, folks. I've shown you what's going on in the world with your leaders. How they're going to kill us all with the nuclear plants irradiating us. That's how they're going to get the population down to 500, 500 million from 7 billion. Kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 3, 2 says that. have the Psalms. Purge me. This is a tough one, but since you aren't doing it, I guess it's time to save. Pray Psalm 51, 7 to 17, and all hell is going to break loose on you, but at least that way you'll be in the kingdom. Purge me with hyssop. Now that's a real strong cleanser. You pray that one if you want to be cleansed. If you can't understand everything I'm telling you, you pray Psalm 51, verse 7. Purge me with hyssop and look out. He will do it. Because Luke 13, 5 kicks in. Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. So you better confess your sin. Psalm 38, 18. I confess my sin and change. Confess your sin of supporting ministers who move God's Sabbath day to Friday. The big test commandment. That's why I'm harping on it. Ezekiel 20, 20. Ezekiel 20, 12. That's the test commandment of keeping the Sabbath day. You know, 1 John 1, 5 to 10. This is the message 
We have heard from him and proclaimed to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while you walk in darkness, you are a liar and you don't practice the truth. You've got to get it through your head. You're not practicing the truth. Your minister is not practicing the truth. And you've got to cut off your minister because we've marked him. According to the Bible, we've marked him. In Mark 9, 43, it's, you know, cut off your hand if it causes you to sin. Cut off your minister if he causes you to sin. It's better to enter into, your, into life eternal without your minister than to <laughs> enter into hell. Which one is it going to be? You know, Jeremiah 26, 3, it may be they will listen. And everyone turn from his evil way. Maybe. It's possible. It's possible to turn from your evil way. Hopefully, some of you members will turn from your evil ways. You know, there are shocking events that are coming. Terrible events that are coming upon this earth. And you've got to change from following your ministers. I give you an invitation to repent and follow God's Bible and you choose not to repent. It's on your head. And we're going to continue admonishing you to repent and not follow your ministers and especially not follow you know the cavalistic Cifero account that is so evil and your minister won't repent so you've got to repent without your minister it's better for you to cut off your minister than for you to enter the gates of hell. There's no other way. There is no other way except for you to cut off your minister. We told you times just you just missed Charleston having the EMP attack. And then then where would you be? This can happen at any time. There isn't any time to dilly-dally around anymore. There, there's the danger of a nuclear war at any time. You know, Obama had his failure to nuke Charleston, literally to nuke Charleston. And yet, you think that you can just go on day to day, week after week, you know, and I've told you about the Iron Mountain Apocalypse. I've told you about all of the evil that is around us. But you won't repent. When are you going to repent? That's the answer. That's the question. When are you going to repent? So are you going to be a soldier for God's word? Are you going to be a soldier for God's word? That's where it finally comes down to. Or are you going to be a disobedient brat? I hope you want to be a soldier for God's word. I really do. I hope you want to be a soldier for God's word. Because that's going to be your only hope. That is the only hope that you're going to have is to be a soldier for God's word. This is like the days of Martin Luther. This is like the days of Martin Luther. So in conclusion, I want you to be a soldier for God's word. I want you to realize we're in the end times, both physically and spiritually. And that you've got to do battle against the devil and the forces of the devil. You've got to do battle against your minister because your minister is not, not 
following God's Bible. So for our closing song today, it's a sermon for today, you've got to be a soldier. So for our closing song, how about onward Christian soldiers? Because we're not backing up. We're not backing up. We're moving forward. We're moving forward. So all please rise, page number 126, onward Christian soldiers. And think on these words. Think on these words. Salah. Think on these words. And put in with the word of Jesus marching on before, because that's what you're following, not the word of your minister. You're following the words of Yeshua. And that means the Sabbath day is on the seventh day of the week. So onward, you Christian soldiers, with the word of Yeshua, which says the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. And not move it to Friday like the poop moves it to Sunday. to get the leaven out of their churches so that the ministers deleaven their false doctrine of moving God's your Sabbath day father to Friday in half the world that your ministers deleaven their church doctrine and stop Turkey God day when you have your feast of tabernacles for seven days instead Tricky God Day throws off your whole plan of salvation. Have the ministers deleaven their doctrine, 
or let it be a witness against them. Now we call upon you, Father, to guide these words and guide this sermon to the right people, for the right people to hear this sermon, so that they, the members, can be the soldiers marching on to war against their lying ministers and realizing that their ministers are lying when their ministers say they obey you. So it's in your hands, Father. We're doing your work. We are the Romans 928 work. We have restored your new moon day. We have restored your four fasts. We have restored your 19 minutes before this Feast of Unleavened Bread, where you wash up the members just before they enter Unleavened Bread so they can keep themselves clean. We have restored your Sabbath in the whole world as proven by our affiliates in Australia, New Zealand, and our 200 members in Pakistan. So, Father, thy will be done. Let there be few saved or many saved, but let this go out as a witness against the ministers, and please cause the members to force the ministers to unleaven the church doctrine during these days of unleavened bread. We thank you for this broadcast, Father, and we give you all praise and glory, and ask this all in Yeshua HaMashiach's holy, righteous name, our soon arriving King of the Earth. Amen. Yes, indeed, we are on a battle.